our lesson is um, teaching values. And our Bible basis is found in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, the 20, 21 through the 33rd verse. And our Bible truth is godly wisdom is necessary to live well and to succeed. Amen. Um, um, somebody needs to meet their phone. I could hear like TV. But nonetheless, our memory verse is he that refuseth and, and look there at the word refuse. It's an E-T-H and that's like continually to refuse instruction. Despiseth, there's another E-T-H, his own soul. But he that heareth, another E-T-H, be reproof, get it? E-T-H at the end, understanding. And that's in Proverbs the 15th chapter and the 30 second lesson aim by the end of this lesson we will discuss the advice given in the lesson that promotes godly wisdom reflect on experiences of following both good and bad advice and decide to follow the advice offered in the proverb and then we had background scriptures as well um, which was in proverbs the 10th chapter first verse and that's what it is. Read and incorporate the insights that you gain from reading the background scriptures. And that is our lesson on today, teaching values. Amen. And so if we have any volunteers to read, please um, go right ahead and read. And we do thank God for our pastor and first lady. I think they're on the line now. We thank God for them. The light of the eyes rejoiceth the heart and a good report maketh the bones fat. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abided among the wise. He that refuseth instruction despiseth his own soul. But he that heareth reproof geteth understanding. The fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. And before honor is humility. Amen. Amen. And that is our lesson for today in our verses. Teaching values. Amen. And I know... Um, in this walk of life, this Christian walk, we've had some good advice and we have taken bad advice, <laughs> amen. And uh, the good advice led us to great things, but the bad advice led, led us to stress and in all kinds of situations, um, jumping off or what have you. And um, in a lot of these scriptures, we find the ETH and that's like a continual thing or what have you of what what the scripture um was saying or what have you and so um here again we have um solomon just encouraging his children you know to go in the right path and um last sunday i said um you know sometimes we've heard experience is the best teacher um, yeah, in some, in some instances, but I don't want to experience drugs or alcohol to, you know, to learn from that, you know, so we have to be uh, wise in what we do and how we live because the memory verse said, um, or the Bible truth said, godly wisdom is necessary. It's necessary to live godly in order to live well and to succeed. If we want a successful life, we have to have godly wisdom because we, we, we need to know how to go in and come out. And there's a hand raised. Um, let's see. Um, go ahead, Dick and his mothers. You know, I was liking the head, heading of this. It says teaching values. And, you know, teaching values, teach to teach is to explain and show someone the right way to do things and the values that go with it that, you know, value is really important. It's useful. You know, is it right or is it wrong? A person's principles or standards of behavior, one's judgment of what is important in life. And I want to just uh, bring up the background scriptures because the background scriptures was from Proverbs 10 and 1 all the way through 15 and 33, our lesson today. And on each one, there was something new. You know, in chapter 10, they talked about the consequences we could expect, chapter 10, consequences we could expect from good or bad behavior you know what do you expect from living a righteous life you got to have some kind of expect expectation um 
And so I like that chapter because, you know, what do we expect? Huh? Reverence for the Lord and obedience to God, as opposed to being wicked and defiant and devious and doing all those un unrighteous things. And then uh, chapter 11 talked uh, about an upright, godly person going in the right direction and rejecting wisdom results in them being lost and without hope. And chapters 12, common sense. Oh, my goodness. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I think we, I hear people say that a lot. You know, they just lack common sense. You know, but common, it says God, this common sense and godly wisdom is very, very important. So people that don't have it, they tell lies and they bring disaster upon the rest of us. I just love the way that, that those five chapters went in line to bring us to where we are now. You know, they, the, the consequences of wisdom and the consequences of, fool, of, of, of foolishness. And chapter 14 brought us to where we are now, the teaching value, so that we don't have to do that. And I like the first, and I love, of course, the first verse. Because foolishness is, is, is you know, folly is just ridiculous. But making fool, foolish mistakes, doing the wrong thing. You don't have no wisdom. You, you just, it says destitute. Destitute is empty. Have nothing to give. Don't have anything good to say, you know, and and they make, you know, people that are folly, that have folly, foolishness, they don't have nothing to give, but they always talking loud and saying nothing. That's what I put at the end. <laughs> and, you know, but people, though, that have that, a man of understanding walks up brightly. People that have that understanding, they walk carefully. They make sure they don't make those mistakes. They make sure they walk in the way of righteousness so that they don't have to repeat those mistakes that they've made or in the first place, not make the mistakes if they follow what the Lord says. So I wanted to just bring out that, that those first, those last five chapters were really, really important to read. And I got a lot out of reading them and I wasn't expected to get all that, you know, but, you know, this is a very powerful lesson and, and values are so important in our life. You know, it's like, our parents, I know 99.9% .9 of our parents told your word is your bond without integrity, you not nothing. And if you can't hold your word, you know, it's like a ship sailing without no sails or a rudder. So, you know, those things are very important. And Solomon was humbly telling us to accept, telling us to humbly accept correction. So I really love this lesson. You know, it's a good lesson. So, if, you know, I'd like to hear from people today. Again, like last Sunday, you guys was popping off. So. Well, Amen. I pre I appreciate that, and that and that is so true. Teaching values because either way, uh, there's always a choice. Like we uh, discussed last uh, Sunday, there's always a choice. You know, of going the right path or going the wrong path, and whether we teach the right way or the wrong way, we're still teaching. You know. Um, we could be teaching bad, uh, you know, examples and, and, and wisdom and, and advice. So it goes both ways. It can go, you know, good advice or bad advice. But we, we must heed to the good advice in order to be successful and be blessed, you know, in this walk that we call life. And so are there anyone who'd like to um, share the scriptures or verses that came out. Oh, I don't know if that was a hand or no, no some, hand. No, some noises or something in the background or what have you. Um, and so the twenty second verse. Um, I'll, I, I guess I'll just kind of go through the verses until someone raises their hand. Um, without uh, cancel, purposes are disappointed. But in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Amen. And so um, that scripture there, you know, to me, is like if we don't get, if we don't seek God, you know, about things that's going on in our lives, we're going to, we're going to have some disappointments. Amen. We're going to have some disappointment, failures, but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. They will get done if we listen to wise counseling, amen, and that's important. You know, we can listen to wise counseling or we could listen to foolish counseling. You know, um, those who may not be led by God to even give you counseling or what have you, 
And sometimes that counseling count, it sounds a lot better than like the counseling, the wisdom counseling, because a long time ago, a wise man said, sometimes it's better to take the longer way home. And I recently have learned that lesson of trying to take the shortcut and I should have took the long way home. Amen. Praise God. But sometimes we get impatient. We don't want to wait. And the instructions are here in the word of God as well. But, you know, it's like, oh, I think I got this. I'm going to go this way. And then it turns to be a disappointment, like the scripture said. So, yes. So um, I'd like to hear from, if I can, um, who is it? Uh, missionary uh, Lorene, uh, what do you think about the uh, lesson on this morning? Any scriptures come out to you that you'd like to um, elaborate on? We're talking about teaching values. And there's so many good scriptures here that we could talk about. Um, we can go on and on about. So missionary um, Edmondson, do you have any input on the, of any of the scriptures on this morning? that um, we're talking about? Um, I like the lesson, you know, the value, teaching about value. We have to, like it says, we have to value, especially we who are in Christ Jesus. We have to value the gift that he placed within us. We have to value it. We can't belittle it. Like, um, we are, we are not ordinary. We are not just um, like one of the, the scripture, we are peculiar, we are royals. You understand me? So not everybody can come and touch us. You understand me? We are untouchable. We are not on the, and that, that little, you know, when you go into the store, that one touch that thing, that one feel that thing, that one. We are, we are much better than that are in Christ Jesus, I mean, in Christ Jesus. So our value, we are valuable and we should, we should always recognize the one who placed all those value in us. Because, you know, when you think about it, when we were out there, we thought we were all of that. But it wasn't until Jesus came our way that I found out that, hey, I'm nothing. I'm like a filter rug before him. I am nothing. So now that he had saved us, put his precious Holy Ghost in us, saints, let me be the Royal Royce. We're not, we're not on any shelf. We're not advertising anything. Because God is in us and because he's in us, he makes us great. And let us not stoop down and devalue what God has placed in us. He placed the Holy Ghost in us. He want us to live holy. He want us to live right. He want us to walk right, talk right. Not only when we go to church, we put on the church, just the church clothes. And then when we come home, we put on the devil's clothes. We should, wherever we are, wherever we are, we should lift up that value, that standard, that holiness, that wherever we are, it don't matter where you are. Because look at this, sis. When he's coming back, we don't know. And wherever we are, if we are ready, we're going to go. And if we're not, we won't. Right? So I, I like the lesson and, and, and the value. The, you know, let us not forget our value, it's all in Christ Jesus. And all that we are today, all that we ever hope to be, it's all because of him. Just remember that. It's nothing good you have done. It's not because you're in a job and you're earning high money and you got a house and you got a car. No, all that I am, all that we are and ever, ever, ever hope to be, it's all because of him. Amen. That's what it is. Amen. Thank you so much, Missionary Edmondson, for sharing um, your thoughts on this lesson. Uh, I'd like to hear from Deaconess uh, Pauline Jackson, if you could give us um, any um, input about the lesson, the verses, 
Thank you so much. Go right ahead. Good morning. Praise God this morning. Well, I agree with uh, what I've heard, but also what I got from this lesson that you should be able to value instruction. You should be able to listen and receive information. And for me, um, I listen to, to pastor. And for, in order to have an instructor, you need to have an instructor that's going to teach you what they are living. So you need to also have some discernment because you can't listen to everyone's instruction. So for me, that verse stood out that you need to be able to listen, put yourself in a position to get instruction on how to live this life and how to walk and how to deal with when trouble comes. And our value system should be different from the world. When we was out in the world, we valued other things, maybe cars or whatever. But once you become saved and a child of God, your value system changes. And you, it's up to us to teach our children, our grandchildren, and anyone that we come in, come in contact with our value system. We value Jesus Christ above everything. And that's what I got from the lesson. You need to be able to receive instruction, be under someone who's going to give you good, sound instructions on how to walk this life. Thank you. Amen. That, that, that was so good. Um, thank God for all of those who um, I called on and gave a, a great input to our lesson. And you're so right, Dick, Deaconess um, Jackson. We can't get um, advice from everybody. You know, we can't listen to everybody. And uh, the scripture that comes to mind, it says, mark the perfect man for, you know, his end, there's life. I might be misquoting that, but um, it tells us to mark the perfect man. And you're right. If, I, if I'm looking at my leader and it seems, you know, I can see him under pressure and he don't fold because he stands on the word of God, I'm gonna go to him and ask him about things when I'm under pressure or I'll, I'll definitely text him and first lady, hey, pray for me, I'm going through this or that. And I know when I go to them, I know they're praying for me and they can give me godly counsel, you know, because like I said, experience, you know, um, people in the body of Christ can give you sound godly advice because of things they've gone through, you know, and no, we don't particularly go through the same thing, but it could be, you know, almost the same thing. And um, our results are gonna be different, of course, but they can kind of like give us some, you know, guidance and some godly counseling. And we know that God is the best counselor ever, but we're, we're here in this body, in this flesh, and we have a group of people within our, com our community of saints that we can go to who have wisdom or what have you. Are there any more um, comments at this time? Uh, First Lady uh, or Pastor have their mic on. Would you like to say anything um, about the lesson on this morning? Yes, this is interesting. I was gonna say something a little bit later. I was, thought First Lady was gonna say something when she put the phone close to me. So let me just say, okay. glory okay. to God. Uh, I just wanted to share that it is important and thank you for everything that has been said. It was very, very good. Thank you, uh, Missionary Smothers for uh, the background that you gave us because Proverbs is that, uh, that book of instruction and guidance, uh, giving us uh, a lot of wise saying. One of the things that caught my attention in looking over the lesson was that uh, you can't always go with somebody who's articulate, who can talk well, uh, but who properly places the speech, who uses what they say at the right time with the right, in the right way. Uh, some folks can give you a whole lot of talk. Uh, I think somebody mentioned this earlier. They can give you a whole lot of talk, but they don't live, as my mom would say, a nickel worth of nothing, my grandmama, a nickel worth of nothing. All right. So it's important for us to make sure that when we are, uh, we choose who that council is. Yes, there's safety and a multitude of counsel, but be careful where the council comes from. Be careful, glory to God, that we're not counseling with buzzers. We're not counseling with crows, but we are counseling with those 
who have who are eagles who are connected to God who are soaring above some stuff. Uh, so it's important for us to be careful who we allow to speak into our spirits. There are a lot of folks who can talk well. There's a lot of folks who uh, who maybe even know the word and they can share the word. But you know when somebody is not living the word that they're supposedly sharing often their word will be perverted word. It will be the word of God inappropriately placed. It'll be uh, the word of God. Now, I'm not saying that God doesn't use anybody or can't use anybody to, to bless you or to encourage you or to give you some direction. But I am saying be careful because many times folks have ulterior motives. They will use the word of God, but they use it for their benefit and not to help you get to the direction or the place that God is trying to get you to go. So it is important for us uh, making sure that uh, we scrutinize by the Holy Ghost, individuals, glory to God, who we're going to allow to speak into our spirits. And often that's important for us to uh, make sure that uh, we have marked their life, that we can determine by our own eyes, by our own experience, that this is a life that's hidden in Christ. Amen. Thank you so much, Pastor, for that input. And you're right. Um, it is important um, who we get the godly counseling from, you know, and you have to, you have to kind of know your circle. You know, we, I see that, that, that word and that saying all the time. We have to know who's, who's in our circle because a lot of times people in our circle may not all together be for us or with us or what have you you know people be plotting all the time and I'm not just you know people just plot and they don't mean you any good and so you have to have wisdom to discern that or what have you and then look at their lives look at their lifestyle you know yeah they can articulate they can do this they can do that and it may seem like they're prospering on every side while you know and just because people prosper, you know, don't mean that their soul is in good shape. And I'm not judging. I'm just saying you just watch the lifestyle and you watch them, you know, for a time. Um, Mother Carpenter, do you have any input on the lesson on this morning? No. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes ma'am. OK, yes. I really enjoyed everything that I heard. I enjoyed what um, Sister De uh, Deaconess Jackson said and also Sister um, Judy and let's continue to pray for her and her family too. And teaching values, it brought, took me all the way back to the mothers, okay? When we were coming up in church and how the mothers taught us the right way to go, okay? And if if we got taught something wrong, we should, you know, we and we went back and found out it was wrong and we went back and spoke to the mothers, but normally back in the days, we didn't say anything to the mothers. We, we should have been able to accept constructive criticism and they should have the mother should have known the teachers to to have taught us the right way what it was supposed to be but I really did like this lesson teaching value, values are very important walking with the Lord we have to do it the right way not the wrong way and we have to be we have to have discernment also to know if it's right or wrong and I just thank God for this lesson on this morning too because I really I enjoyed really that I really enjoyed that. Teaching values are very important. They are very important, and we should know the right way. We should know the right way, not the wrong way. You're right, Sister O'Meara. We should know the right way, not not the wrong way. Especially, and like you said, people can discern things that are not right. Uh, you know, if you're not being taught the right way, and that's why I'm glad we have two good leaders: our pastor and our first lady. And members in the church that can come to us, you know, and we don't have to go, you know, go way out there. And I just thank God for everybody, everybody, everybody in this whole wide world. You knew I was going to say it, Pastor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the men of the cloth. And I saw our bishop this morning, Bishop Shears, on a pastel, I think it's pastel um, Hilliard's um, program uh, this morning. Him and his wife and I was a blessing. For me to see them, you know, and to know that, you know, now here's a man of value, you know, a, a, you know, he's our bishop, he's our national bishop, 
And that, and that was, it was very good. This lesson is a very good lesson. And we, and I'm sure our parents, when we were coming up, taught us, like Sister Smothers said, you know, your word is your bond. That's what my mother used to say. Don't be going out there lying and telling somebody you're going to do something and then you don't do it when they confront you. That's not being truthful and that's not having a good, good value of yourself. So I just thank you for this time. And I just thank everybody for praying for me and my family. Amen. Thank, Amen. Thank you so much, Mother. Um, Elder yes. Ivory, do you have any um, input about the lesson on this morning? Sister Wright would like to speak. Oh, she has okay. her hand up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Amen. This is a beautiful lesson. Giving honor to God, giving honor to our pastor, to our first lady, to the conductors, the teachers. Thanking the Lord for everything that I heard. You know, it's um, Proverbs is just full of wisdom um right on down the line you can you can take something out of each and every scripture that we have i like the last line and then last line of verse 33 it says and before honor is humility amen mm -hmm. um, before we can really learn anything or accept wisdom from others or be taught before we can have a teachable spirit, we have to be humble. And I think that's a, you know, a great battle for many of us. Um, even if it's not in general, it may be situational. You know, you might get into a situation where you're like, well, I know how to do A, B, or C, you know, and in just that, that split second, you took yourself out of the right position because now you're not really open to receiving the wisdom, you know, that might come from God or other people. And so we always have to constantly, constantly stay, you know, um, in a humble state of mind and have a humble spirit and be willing to be taught, you know, be willing to um, acknowledge God in his rightful place and say, Lord, you know, you lead me and guide me. You direct my path. I think I know what I'm supposed to do. I, you know, I've done it 30 times before, but even though I've done it 30 times before, I want you to lead me and guide me and tell me the right way, because I know if you do, it'll be correct. You know, I won't be leaning on my own understanding because his knowledge and way of seeing things is much broader, much deeper. And so he might know that you are in a room, even though you've, let's say you've taught Sunday school a million times before. Maybe there's somebody on the line um, that is there every week, but in that particular week, they're going through something. And so even though you've taught Sunday school every week, you know, when you pray, when you have someone pray us in and, and you take that, that humble stance, you know, that Lord, you're in charge, then he may lead you to go a certain way with the lesson, even if it's not what's on our, um, you know, in our commentary, he may say, he may put it on your heart, to give a testimony or to go a certain way. And you don't even realize that you're touching somebody that really needed that word, but God knows, you know? So that's why we always have to, to acknowledge him first and ask him to lead us and, and guide us in everything that we do. Amen. Thank you so much. Um, Elder Ivory says he's driving. He cannot talk. Amen. I thought so. So. We won't call Elder Ivory again, but I want to speak about how, we, you know, listening to, you know, sometimes when we think about it, we have some real messed up ways of thinking. And we really like, like I said about our parents, your word is your bond and this and that and the other. But a lot of times we talk about don't tell none of your secrets, hold on to this, hold on to that, because people are going to use it against you and all that stuff. But discernment will allow us to pick, like Missionary Mary said. Pick who you're going to be, who you're going to hang out with, not only hang out with, because people you hang out with sometimes co-sign every silly thing you do and more. But wise people, people that have honor, people that you know, when you look in their eyes, you can see their heart. You know, it speaks about that in the lesson. You can see that this person is going to give me some, some wise counsel. This person cares about me. This person has knowledge of the word of God that I don't have. And I got a great big gigantic, it's so big my head is hurting. Decision to make 
and I need wise counsel. So sometimes that that our little herd is not the place where we should be because we're probably on the same level somewhat. But when we seek wise counsel, I heard Mother Carpenter say about the mothers. And you know, way back in the day, you couldn't. Wasn't nothing you could say. Even though you might have known better. Y'all don't hear me. Even though you might have known better or a different way, you did not say anything. So for me, that was okay because I had more than one opinion. I had several people that could tell me something and they were wise people and they loved me. And I could look in their eyes and know that they were telling me the truth. So sometimes we can, we need to change our patterns of thought. In fact, I always say, I got to change the way I think. I can't think, I can't change you. I can only change me. And sometimes I got to change the way I think about things, you know, so that I can be an asset and not a liability. So if we pay heed to the words of wisdom, you know what? We'll be wiser, we'll be smarter, like in that movie, The Help. You know, you smart, you wise, you this. We'll be all those and a whole lot more. So when we reject wisdom, guess what? We're damning our own lives. We're doing our own souls. We need to learn to listen and listen to learn. And I know that's for me. Learn to listen and listen to learn. So I praise God for this lesson because it was very powerful. So, and it said, what does it mean to abide among the wise? I just gave you my opinion on that. Does anyone else have an opinion on what it means to abide among the wise? Amen. Well, I guess I'll go again. Go um, right ahead. I was thinking about that, to abide among the wise. You know, sometimes it's intimidating to abide among the wise. And maybe we need to talk about that more because people will get in their feelings because they are in um, an environment with people who know more than them or who they feel, you know, know more than them or who have achieved more than them. And so they, they will reject wisdom simply because of that emotional reaction, you know. But part of wisdom is to put that emotion aside and understand that this person may be able to teach you something everybody can really teach you something. It doesn't matter, you know, what they've achieved or not achieved in life. Everybody can teach you something if you listen and you observe. So, you know, but always keep a humble spirit and pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you what needs to be revealed to you, you know, and be willing to accept it when it comes. But then, yes, we also have to be wise in that, um, you know, like what pastor was saying, some people will manipulate you and use the word of God for their own benefit, you know, to make themselves um, look better or to gain position or whatever. So you do have to be wise, but that's why we lean on God because he knows all. Amen. Amen. There's a hand raised missionary Edmondson. Amen. Yeah, I like, I like that. I was just reading it, you know, to be among the wise. And if, if the Lord going to lead you to someone who will be able to lead you out of whatever you are in, or uh, whatever you can, you can do by your own, he's not going to lead you to someone who's going to become your downfall. That's, that's not the kind of God we, 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 we serve. And if you got the, the Holy Ghost and you listen, he's going to lead you to that right person. That person that's gonna have a little, a little wisdom. That person that been there before, know what it's all about. The Lord is gonna lead you to that person, and then you will know within yourself. Your heart is gonna be convicted. As long as you are willing to hear, you know. I remember growing up, my grandma would say these little words, these little words, and I would be like. Granny, you always saying these are the things. He would, you know, one of the, I'll just rephrase one of the things she would say. She said, when you have the kids and they little bit, they tangled your feet. And I'm like, Granny, why? They, they, they're small. They can't do nothing to your feet. He, she said, yes, because you can't go nowhere. You have to have them all the time. And then she said, when they get big, they tangle your heart. I said, Granny, from your feet to your heart, she said, yeah, because they do stuff that pains your heart. They do stuff that, you know, your heart feels it. So 
it's good to be among the wise. Because I tell you, when trouble comes your way, you're going to remember what Mother Carpenter said. When things mm -hmm. come upon you, you're going to remember what Pastor said, what First Lady said. When things come upon your way, you're going to remember. Deacon Smarter said so and so. And that's what going to pull you out of whatever you in. But you make sure you got a ears to hear and a heart to receive it and just, just receive it and try to be, try to learn more. We can never learn enough. No matter how much you read the scripture, Deacon Smothers, go back and read it again and you got a new, you got a new understanding. So we learn every day. So saints, let us, let us just be wise. Okay. Amen. Amen. That is so true. Um, before I bring our pastor up, that is so true. And and um, um, Sister Wright, what you said is so true because sometimes we are intimidated. I know years ago, just you know, coming into um, salvation and going to certain church or what have you. Um, Sometimes it's intimidating because, you know, you have the seasoned, you know, people there. Then you have the in-between um, saints or whatever, you know, that's kind of like it's been there a couple of years under their belt or what have you, so to speak. But um, when we really want wisdom and we really want to seek God and know his ways, like you said, we have to put the, the, the pride aside and look for those well, for me personally, I look for the seasoned mothers and I learned so much. And to this day, that's been like over 20 something years ago, but the same, the words that that mother spoke into my life, I'm living it now. And I always refer back to the conversations that we had, you know, in a car sitting there for hours, but she was just pouring into me. And, and I thank God for that because I put away my pride and it's like, okay, she go through all of this. We'll, we'll give her joy. We'll give her peace in spite of what she's going through. And when, when those mothers can sit you down, cause that we're talking about experience again. She had that experience with God. She had that relationship, that connection to God. So I, I you know, I looked at her, you looked at her life. You know, because when the scripture says mark the perfect man, that means woman too. Someone that's doing right or whatever, that's going to be peace at the end of that of that person. Amen. Because they're godly and they give godly counsel or what have you. Now, on the flip side of that is, you know, sometimes we still have to seek God because we don't want people's ism and schisms. You know, if you, if you can't give me anything according to the word of God, then... You know, that's just kind of your opinion. Yeah, you can give me the experiences and, and things that you did, but it all has to line up back to God, amen? Because we don't do anything of our own, amen? You know, we, we are led by the spirit of God. And so, um, again, a good lesson, teaching values. And you're teaching one way or another, and sometimes you don't even have to say anything. Your life will teach others, amen? The right way or the wrong way to go. Amen. And so at this time, uh, we're so honored to bring up our pastor as we do every Sunday. And we just thank God for him entrusting us with this part of the ministry, the, our Sunday school department. And so at this time, without any further ado, uh, pastor is going to bring us um, a little higher. Amen. In the lesson. Amen. God bless everybody this morning. Uh, we honor the Lord again for each one of you. And uh, once again, I, I state how appreciative I am for each one of you and for our instructors today, our superintendent, assistant superintendent, and each one of you because you bring so much to, uh, amen, the study of God's word. I got to tell you, uh, we've been talking about unity here for the last couple of months now. And, uh, and it is important to recognize that uh, in our uni unity, when we are all connected to the Holy Ghost and he's leading and guiding each of us, then what happens is when we share with one another, we are actually sharpening one another because the Holy Ghost is empowering our, not only our speech, but our understanding. 
the Holy Ghost is empowering not only our speech, but our understanding, but our reception of that which we have heard. It is important for us to get this, that nobody knows everything. You might put in the chat box, you cannot always be the smartest person in the room. You cannot always be the smartest person in the room. You've got to be teachable. You've got to place yourself in a situation where you can be enriched or enhanced. That's wisdom. Glory to God. If you know all the answers, you're a fool. If you know all the answers, you're a fool. Because nobody knows all the answers. Amen. We all need somebody to encourage, to enlighten, to instruct, to enrich us. You always should be where, where you find a place where you, when somebody says something, you can say, hmm, that's worthy of consideration. Yeah. Glory to God. And so we talked about this earlier. Uh, and, and, and it's in the scripture. First of all, I wanted to go to. Uh, Proverbs 9 and verse number 10, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, glory to God. And the knowledge of holy is understanding. And then when you read here, it says in verse 33 of our lesson today, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility. Understand that the fear of the Lord is powerful, meaning the reverence of God, the reverence of God, the holding God, hold, holding God above everything in your life, reverencing him in first position in priority of your life, because it is in that way that the rest of your life finds alignment. Can I talk to somebody? Yes. It is in that way that the rest of your life finds alignment. When you align your life, with God's will, with his word, things flow. Uh, matter of fact, you remember having a, a car where, um, glory to God, uh, you ride at a certain uh, level, a certain speed, and the, stars, the tires start to wobble. That's out of balance. And many of our lives, glory to God, we go day by day, but every once in a while, we'll find ourselves in a place where we just get out of balance because we begin to look at our own. We have not gotten God in the place he needs to be. Now, I talked about alignment because what happens is when you mess around and are driving, and if you let God take his hands off the wheel, your car begins to veer to the right or to the left. That's out of alignment. And so it's important for us to stay connected to God so we can not only have alignment, following his will, going in the direction he wants us to go, staying in our lane, but also we have balance. We're not wobbling as we walk. <laughs> we have balance. And so it's important for us to get this. It also talks about uh, our memory verse today. And that, this is an interesting one right here because not everybody will agree with this, but we ought to. The scripture says in the memory verse, he that ref refuses instruction despises. I think I heard the, the uh, superintendent this morning talking about the ETH on the end of the word. And the ETH, he explained, glory to God, means continues to. It's the same as putting an S on the end of the word. So despises means to dis continues to despise. So it says uh, he that continues to refuse instruction despises his own soul. When you refuse to receive rebuke, you despise your own soul. All of us, all of us, let me say that in English, all of us will need to be instructed, to need to be corrected in life. Nobody has all the answers at the time when an answer is required. We need to align ourselves with God so that even in those situations where we might not be where we need to be, God will send somebody along to help us. You ever got to a place where you wanted to give an answer, you weren't sure, and somebody answered it for you, and you was like, I'm glad they didn't call on me. Or they, somebody else answered, and you go, oh, yeah, I received that. I hadn't even thought about it that way. Yes. Yes. Am I the only one who's had to do that? I've been in the room, glory to God, and I might have been, you know, in church terms, 
the highest ranking in the room, but I didn't have the answer. Glory to God. And I was glad that somebody else had the answer. I'd be like, ooh, thank you, Jesus. That was good. It is important because God wants us all to understand that he is the source and none of us have all the answer and the wise recognize that they go to God and then God provides what they need at the time when they need it. That's why the Bible says, I know this is part of the message for later on today, but you got to wait on the Lord. You got to wait on him and he'll send you what you need. Sometime in the, as the folks used to talk about, in the self same hour, like right when you need it, it comes. All right. And so I, I wanted to get here. So it says, uh, we do not despise rebuke, but rather we reverence and appreciate it because when received properly, it nourishes us, it strengthens us. But he that heareth the reproof getteth understanding. Oh. I thought it was that. I thought I did the right thing. Because many times we, we are doing what we thought to be right. And we all make mistakes. But sometimes we don't, we need to hear, you shouldn't do that anymore. Or maybe not that way. Or man, that was all. But when that happens, and that's why it's important to have somebody close to you who has the ability to hold you accountable. Now, everybody can't do it. You got to get somebody who's connected to God, who's full of the Holy Ghost, and who is not self-centered or self-absorbed. Yeah. I put a hard period there because I wanted to make sure. You just can't hang out with folks because they're popular. You can't let everybody speak into your spirit. I said that earlier, but everybody ought not have access to your soul. So it's important to get folks who are connected who are now self-absorbed, who are concerned about the will of God being accomplished in both of your lives. And then you have somebody that can hold you accountable, somebody who has the right to say, well, you need to rethink that one. That probably was not the best decision for today. If this might not be the best move for you right now, wait a little while. Can I talk to somebody? It is important for us to understand that we need good godly counsel yes there is safety to it in the multitude of counsel yes but get the right counsel around you because there are some folks who will counsel you to their own benefit and not yours there are some folks who want to counsel you who need counsel themselves there are some folks who will counsel you based on what benefits them. They counsel you based on what they heard somebody else say, but it has not been tried in their own lives. They don't know. And so it's important for us to seek the Lord in all your ways. Can I go back to that old proverb we say all the time, but in all your ways, acknowledge him. And he'll direct your paths, P-A-T-H. Yes. Can I talk to somebody? All right. So I want to thank each one of you today. And I pray um, something. First of all, I know you've got a blessing out of this. Now, you'll have to take heed to this council, this Sunday school lesson. You've got to take heed to it. It just can't be a Sunday school lesson. When we're talking about wisdom here. It can't be a Sunday school lesson. You just heard and go, Woo, what a good lesson. Oh, my God. What a good lesson. I, ta, 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 ta. What a good lesson. That won't do. You've got to take <laughs> you've got to take this lesson and apply it to your life. Remind yourself you have to do uh, glory to God as it says in the scripture. Glory to God, you got to meditate therein day and night. For then shall you make your way prosperous, and then shall you have good success. Meditate so that it becomes a part of your life, a part of your consideration prior to making the decision. Are there any questions or is there anything anybody uh, need, wanted to require or request? I wanted to make sure that uh, we give you an opportunity. We had a couple of minutes here to be able to, for you to be able to say, uh, ask a question, whatever. It's important, glory to God. Because in all you're getting, you need to get understanding. Yeah, wisdom is the principal thing, therefore get wisdom, but in all you're getting, get an understanding. Wisdom is great, but it doesn't work for you if you don't understand it. 
I heard some wise people, some people will say some wise things, but I didn't understand it. Some of it, I didn't understand until I got to be this age. And some of it, I still don't understand. Some of the stuff my mom and them used to say, it, it, it didn't make sense then. It was wise. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Glory to God. You didn't understand all that stuff mom and them said. Yeah. Yes. Um, I have a question, Pastor. You look really great, too, on that screen. Yes. Uh, oh, that was good. I never said. But um, what's, the, what's the difference between uh, wisdom and knowledge? All right. The question is, what's the wisdom between, the, the difference between wisdom and knowledge? Glory to God. Somebody want to help me with that? Glory to God. Yes. Go ahead. That's good. Uh, so I don't know if you all heard this, but missionary uh, Burnett said knowledge is getting that information. Oh, y'all saw it. Somebody said, amen, missionary Burnett. So y'all heard it. All right. So it's important to get that. So I, I, I often said this is just mine because, you know, I, I'm not wise as some of y'all. So just, let me just give you mine since they asked you. Mine, knowledge is uh, wisdom is knowledge properly applied. Wisdom is knowledge properly applied, all right? In the right proportion, at the right time, when you see, see, cause a whole lot of folks know some stuff and they'll say some stuff, but it's in the wrong season to say it. Anybody ever gave you some good advice and it wasn't time for that advice? They said it too loud so everybody else could hear. They said it for their own benefit. Glory to God. They said it after you needed it and they, they were there to give it to you before. They didn't say it quietly. They didn't. They said it for their own benefit, their own self uh, edification or glorification. Yeah. So it's important. I, I believe wisdom uh, is knowledge properly applied. All right. Um, and that's that's my short definition for that. I hope that works. That's a good question. Thank you so much, uh, Superintendent. Amen. That's important. Um, because a whole lot of folks have answers and a whole lot of folks got a lot of knowledge, but they don't have wisdom. Right. And, uh, and so there are no other comments or questions. Thank you for that question. Uh, thank you all for being a part and making Sunday school so informative, so in, in enriching, empowering. Amen. All of us contribute to what God is going to do. I'm going to talk about that a little bit at 1130, but all of us have a place in the victory of all of us. All of us have a place in the victory of all of us. All of us have a place in the victory of all of us. Amen. So you ought to write in the chat box, help me for my, help me in my victory. Help me in my victory. Help me in my victory, because all of us have a place in the victory of all of us, amen. So uh, my life is enriched by your life, all right. God bless each one of you this morning. We, ap we appreciate all of you taking the time to get up out the bed, amen, and come online, glory to God, and be a part of the study of God's word. I know it might sound like it's not that much, but if it wasn't that much, everybody would be doing it. It is important. It is critical. Sometimes folks think they have all the answers, but again, I said it earlier, but nobody has all the answers, whether you think you do or not. Nobody has all the answers. And though that's one of the reasons why we absolutely need one another to succeed. Somebody said the song to survive. Amen. But I think it's, we need one another not only to survive, but to thrive. 